Hello everybody and welcome back to the multiplayer project where it's Sunday and it's kind of my day to uh, recharge a little bit. But uh, I wanted to tackle a little bit here. This is probably going to be a shorter episode and that's probably going to be the case on Sundays going forward. Just because I want a little bit of time to get away from the nitty gritty here and come back to it fresh on Monday. But for right now, the thing that I want to tackle is the fact that we are rotating our tiles currently. And that means that our north node doesn't necessarily connect externally, right? So when we rotate our tile, I want to check, let's go into our map here. When we rotate this, are we doing our, our nav node neighbors? You know what? I don't actually know. In our generate map here, we do assign neighbor. Okay. And that's done after we instantiate. So we can go into our tile then and go to assign neighbor. And yes, we do it like that. Okay, so when we rotate this, that of course means that our nodes are not necessarily correct. Which means that we should rotate nodes. And then we're going to just pass in tile data dot rotation dot y or actually just tile data dot rotation okay so all we're going to do here is we're going to create ourselves a private void rotate nodes and we'll take in a this should be an integer int tile data dot or actually just simply int rotation there we go so we'll take that in and all we'll need to do is just rotate this around right so let's pop open unity here and let's just spawn ourselves a quick prefab here it doesn't really matter which one we'll do tile cliff corner inside okay so these are our three north ones these are our three south ones and these are our three central ones right think about it in a three by three grid so when we rotate this by 90 degrees that is our basic tile set object we want to unlock that. There we go. When we rotate this by 90 degrees, that means that our north tiles are now northeast, east, and northwest. Or southeast, rather. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and say if rotation equals zero, then we will simply return. We don't need to do anything because this is correctly set up for a rotation of zero. Else if rotation equals 90 then we're going to need to rotate all of them except center node center node remains and then we'll do else if rotation equals 180 and then finally else if rotation equals 270 okay so we're just going to need to get these all rotated around and they're going to be rotating clockwise here by, what is it, two positions per? So the north node becomes the east node. Yes. So it gets rotated by one full cross position, not a diagonal position, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So our north node would be equal to our east node. And we can grab this out of our list of nav nodes. We know the initial order these are in, but that doesn't really help us too much, does it? Not tremendously. We're going to need a record of our old nodes. So we're going to do nav node old n. We're also we're just going to keep this nice and short. Old n, old e, old w, old. Actually, we're just going to do it this way. Old n equals north node. And then we can probably just do this, right? And then this would be old e equals east node. Yeah, that works fine. So then old s equals south node. And old w equals west node. Wonderful. And then we're going to say old NE equals northeast node. Old SE equals, actually no space there, SE equals 
southwest node. Old, this will then be southwest. No, this will be southeast. Southeast node. And then old, this will be SW equals southwest node now. And then old NW equals northwest node. Okay, so we have a reference to all of our old nodes. Wonderful. So then we can just say north node equals old east node. And then we can also say that east node equals old s node. So that's our south node. And then south node is equivalent to our old, this would be I may have confused myself already. Uh, this would be our old, we're moving clockwise, so this would be our old west node. And then our west node equals our old north node. Correct? Correct. So our north node that goes right here, when we rotate it 90 degrees, goes right here. That becomes our east node. Then our east node, when we rotate this another 90 degrees, becomes our south node, our south node would become our west node, so on and so forth. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so I have confused myself less, wonderful. Now we're going to need to do the diagonals. So we're gonna go with northeast node equals our old, this would then be instead of our old northeast, this would become our southeast. And then our southeast node would become equivalent to our old southwest node and then our southwest node would become equivalent to our old northwest node and our northwest node would become equivalent to our old northeast node okay so there's our rotations for 90 degrees wonderful for 180 we just need to invert them so north node is equivalent to our old south node. East node is equivalent to our old west node. And then south node is equivalent to our old north node. And west node is equivalent to our old east node. Simple inversion. So our northeast node would become equivalent, of course, to our old southwest node. Our southeast node would become equivalent to our old northwest node. Our southwest node would become equivalent to our old northeast node. And our northwest node would become equivalent to our old southeast node. Okay, so that gets us our rotations in three of our four directions. Wonderful. And note that this is done before we set up internal adjacencies, and this is also done when we spawn the tile, so this is done before we add any neighbors. So for 270, we need to just go the opposite direction as we go here. So north node equals our old west node. Our west node would then be equal to our old south node. And then our south node would be equal to our old... Let's see here, our old east node, I believe. Yes, and then our east node would be equal to our old north node, because we're going counterclockwise at this point. Okay. Now for diagonals. So we gotta do northeast node would then be equivalent to our northwest node, so our old northwest. And then we'll do northwest node is equivalent to our southwest node, so old southwest. And then our southwest node would be equivalent to our old southeast node. And our southeast node would be equivalent to our old northeast node, because we're just going counterclockwise. Fantastic. So that gives us all of our rotated nav nodes. And then we just hope that we never rotate a tile again, I guess. <laughs> but that will make it so that our nodes are connected correctly. Wonderful. Now, I did want to do one more thing this episode. And like I said, this will probably be a bit of a short episode. But I did want to put in all of our tile presets, or all of our tile prefabs, rather. 
and I wanted to make sure that they all have their materials correctly set up, and I just deselected all of them for no reason. You know what? It'll be a lot faster if I go like that. There we go. And I just deselected them again for no reason, because I am great at clicking. Wonderful. Can I click and drag? No, I can't. And that disables our selection. Wonderful. Okay, I want it to be um, within the prefabs folder. Can we search just within this folder for tile? Yes, we can. That makes things a whole lot easier. Okay, we're just going to put these all out here. Now, some of them are going to be overriding each other. That's okay. So first things first, let's hop into our materials here. And there is no save option here, is there? That's disgusting. This isn't going to work. That's disgusting at all. Or, that's disgusting entirely. Unless there's an option to uh, modify the prefab from here. Select prefab root. Open prefab asset. Yeah, that's the way we'd, we'd want to do it. Okay, so we know that tile base is work is the correct... Uh, it is the correct material. That's the word I'm looking for. Wow, that took me way too long. So tile cliff, corner inside, that is the correct materials. Tile shore straight is not. So let's go ahead and select our, or rather open our prefab asset. And we're going to go into our materials here. And we're going to give this a water material. We're going to give this a cliff material. We're going to give this a shore material, and we're going to give this a green dark material. Excellent. So that's tile, short, straight. There we go. So there's that one done. And I just want to go through all of these and make sure that they are all correct. So we will select this, this uh, prefab. We'll open the prefab asset. Wonderful. This will be green dark. This will be cliff. Okay. So we can now get rid of that. It's going to be a little bit of a tedious process. But, I mean, it's not a bad thing to do on, an, on a day off. There we go. So we'll select this prefab asset as well. Nope. I meant to open the prefab asset, not select the prefab asset. And we will go ahead and give ourselves green dark and cliff. Wonderful. Now, many of these are already correctly set up, like these diagonals. They can just go away. And this is tile cliff straight here. That's, of course, good to go. This one is good to go. This one is good to go. I believe that these corridors are. Yes, indeed, they are. They can just go away. Fantastic. Now, some of these don't look exactly correct. Now, do they? We also kind of don't care. We're not really working on water tiles just yet. I think I'm going to get rid of these water tiles for right now, and we're just not going to concern ourselves with them. This is the base water tile. That's shore water tiles there. Okay, so these inside corners are good to go. These outside corners are good to go, but I need to be sure to select the correct things. Okay, these ramps here, they're using green light. I actually want to change that to be the same as everything else. We don't currently have ramps in our in our scene, but we will definitely be using them. So we're going to change this over to green dark. Wonderful. And we'll do the same thing here. Open that prefab. Green dark. Wonderful. Okay, and it looks like these islands are good to go. Yes, indeed they are. These cliff corridor caps are also good to go. I just kind of want to hide the login screen for right now. I'll have to remember to turn that back on before we're done here, but that'll do. And most of these remaining still need to be changed over. Cliff diagonal to normal, however, is good to go. Okay, so everything else here needs to be changed in terms of its materials. So let's just get started on that. We'll open this prefab asset. We'll change this over to green dark and cliff. Wonderful. And then that can be deleted. And green, dark, and cliff. Wonderful. That can then be deleted. 
and we'll do green, dark, and cliff. It's going to be very repetitive. <laughs> that can be deleted. And we are going to do the same thing here. Green, dark, and cliff. It'll just be good to have this done, realistically. That's all I'm trying to do, really. So we'll go ahead and open this one. Green, dark, and cliff. Wonderful. Only a couple more. Green, dark, and cliff. There we go. We'll open that. And the same exact thing. Great. Open this one. Green, dark, and cliff. It's a very tedious process. And this is why I'm kind of glad I'm not doing this on a heavy coating day. Just want to get this one out of the way right now when I'm not too focused on getting through a bunch of complicated logic right now. So we'll green, dark, and cliff. Wonderful. And we will green, dark, and cliff. And I know this is going to surprise you. No one saw this coming, but we're going to do this green, dark, and cliff. I know, I'm shaking things up here. Actually, I'm really going to shake things up with this one. I'm going to do this one cliff and then green dark. <laughs> Whoa, I'm getting crazy here. I don't know if I should keep doing that. I'm going to go back to, to green dark and cliff. This is what we know works. This is no time for experimentation. Actually, this is a perfect time for experimentation. Okay, there we go. So we have all those materials done now. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the login screen back on before I forget to do that. And there is one more thing that I would like to do. And I'm going to pull GIMP over. Hello, Rogue Tech thumbnail. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new image here. We're going to do this 1024 by 1024. And we're going to go ahead and go to render noise. And we're going to go for difference clouds. Actually, no, we're not. I changed my mind. We are going to go for solid noise. Yes, this is the one we're going for. I want to crank up that detail. I want to make sure it is tileable. We'll grab ourselves a new seed. And then let's make this... Actually, this size is probably absolutely fine. Excellent. So then I'm just going to export that as a PNG. And that's going to go, I guess I'll put that onto the desktop and we'll call that noise.png. Wonderful. And then let's go ahead and create a folder here and we'll call this textures. Wonderful. And we'll head onto the desktop and grab noise.png. Move that straight into the textures and we can delete that. It's no longer necessary. Wonderful. So here's our noise texture, and we're just going to then create ourselves a folder, and we'll call this graphs. And we are going to create ourselves a new shader graph here. So a new PBR graph, and we're going to call this grass. Wonderful. Now let's see if I can remember how to do this. I wasn't planning on doing this today, but we're going to be taking in a texture 2D, and this is going to be our grass texture and we will default that to our noise which is somewhere in here here it is to our noise wonderful and we're also going to take in a color and we'll call this our add color okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a sample texture 2D. And we're going to bring in our grass texture, which this is not quite large enough. Let's see if we can embiggen our blackboard here. There we go. And I'm actually going to pop this out, the uh, editor here. There we go. Nope, I don't want to. Actually, I do want to save that. I didn't want to close it. Okay, we'll pop this out. There we go. Now we've got a little bit more space to work with. So we'll go ahead and hook this up here. Our UV, let's see if I can remember how to do this. 
Uh, let's see here. So this is position. And then we want to take the world position here. And then we want to create ourselves a vector 2. And then we want to create ourselves a split node, if I recall correctly. We take in this 3. And then I'm trying to remember, I believe we just want R and G. I'm not 100% on that. And then we'll slap that into the albedo there. I think that's what we wanted. Except we want to then create ourselves a mix node, which would be like a lerp. There we go. And we'll lerp this between... Actually, we don't want to lerp this. We probably want to just do an add node. So we'll take this and we'll take that to our albedo. And then we'll just add in our add color. Wonderful. And we will make this color be a bit of a medium green, kind of like this. Okay, this is not exactly what we are looking for, clearly. I've forgotten how I want to mix this. Uh, probably a multiply node, actually. Uh, this went to the wrong location. Yes, a multiply node is more like it. So we'll delete that, and then we'll turn our smoothness down to zero. And then we will create ourselves an add node here, because I just want to lighten this up a little bit. We'll add this in over here. And then we'll create ourselves a color node. We'll just put this in. And let's lighten this up to be a little bit. Actually, I, I don't think we want to do that. Let's create ourselves like an uh, HSV node. No, that's not what they call it. Um, we want to probably do... Let's see, there's hue, saturation, maybe a white balance no node? I'm, I'm just making things up at this point. Actually? Kind of works. Yeah, that kind of works. <laughs> okay, we'll call that good for now. We'll save that asset. And then let's just pop out one of these prefabs. And what we should see here, once we change our material here, we definitely want to change our green dark material to instead of using universal render pipeline slash lit, instead we are going to use shader graphs grass. Okay, yep. So our world space isn't quite working the way I had hoped it would. And let me try to remember how to fix this. We may need R and B. Like that. No, absolutely not. Well, that's G and B, actually. R and B. Yes, that's more like what we want. And then you can see as we move it around, the texture actually moves too. Wonderful. Now we can see that this is definitely overlit. So let's go in here and let's turn down our white balancing a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. That's slightly better. Okay, and now we are actually going to do the same thing for Cliff. We're going to go ahead and duplicate our grass object here. So I want to... Apparently we can't duplicate shader graphs. That's awkward. Well, what we can do is we can create ourselves a new shader graph here. And of course, this is not the final look of these. I just want to apply some sort of texture. We're going to call this Cliff. And we'll open that up and we'll just copy all of this and paste it in here. Get rid of this PBR master if we can. Actually, we'll just delete this PBR. Wait, we can't? No, we can. Okay, 
We'll just plop that in there. We'll set the smoothness to zero. Wonderful. And we're going to go ahead and add in our texture 2D. This is going to be the noise texture and we will default that to our noise. Wonderful. We'll also add in our, we'll call this the multiply color. There we go. And we'll delete this and we'll put in the multiply color right about here. And we're going to make this multiply color be a bit of a dark gray. This one, we're just going to not white balance at all. Okay. And we also want to make sure that we're going on instead of the R and the and the G axis or R and B, I think we want to go on the G and B axis. Because I think we want that to be going this direction. Also in world space for now. We can change it to whatever we want. But we're going to have this be shader graphs cliff. Perfect. That worked pretty much exactly the way I wanted it to. So if we duplicate this, duplicate this, there we go. And I'm gonna rotate this by 90 degrees. You can see that we don't have to worry about our rotation there. And then if we move this over to be at a position of three, you can see that the texture here is seamless and the texture here is also seamless. I mean, there's a bit of a seam there because it's a pretty sharp corner, but you can see that the texture does not actually have a seam. Wonderful. Now I'm okay with this darkness level on the, uh, on the cliff, but I kind of feel like we need a little bit less variation on the green. So let's go ahead and open up the grass here and just modify that a little bit in terms of its coloration. So we're going to delete the white balance node here, and we're just going to take this over and stick that into the albedo. That should, in theory, be fine, but I want to take the color here, and I want to adjust the contrast. So this is our in here, and then we're not going to take this contrast in here. We're instead going to delete that. And we're just going to take that in like that. And we're going to turn down this contrast down to maybe 0.25. Yeah, that's definitely better. I'm not hugely happy with the coloration of the green dark here. Maybe if we just turn that down a little bit, kind of like this. And then can we adjust the uh, brightness in the grass in here? Like we can have the contrast down like it is. I'm okay with that. I mean, I guess the way that we would do that would be to just change this add color, right? Make this a little bit brighter, kind of like that. Okay, that'll do. Now we don't have anything like a, a normal map or anything on here, so it's still going to look a little weird. And things like this are going to look weird as well. And that's definitely something that we should consider. We might want to consider using like a triplanar node, but that's a little bit outside of the scope of what I want to do here. And realistically, we're always going to be viewing it from like this angle. So there might be some things there, but I just want to fire this up and we'll see no real difference in terms of our, uh, in terms of the tiles that are getting chosen. There'll still be some issues with that and we'll get back to fixing that next episode. Yeah, go ahead and save that. But I just want to see how this looks when we have just a little bit of texture on there. I don't really want to put too much effort into that, but I just figured we might as well, and it'll help us see some particular issues a little bit more clearly to have just that noise texture layered on there. I was hoping by the time I finished that sentence that our encryption handshake would be done, but no such luck. Now it is. Okay, and yeah, you can see that looks quite a lot better, but we really probably should be using a triplanar node for the... Uh, for the...
cliffs here. That's the word I'm looking for, because there's definitely some stretching going on in some of these directions. But we can now see that there's definitely some issues over here, and this just generally looks a lot better. Nice. Now we're still having a difficult time seeing like that there's a cliff right here. And that's something we definitely want to work on. But uh, that sort of visual fidelity is something we're not super concerned about right now. And yeah, things like this. That said, this is, I believe, this is an inside corner, which is why this is like this. Regardless, that is a small improvement. Okay, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop there for now. Like I said, this was just kind of a bit of a day off for me. And next episode, we are going to be back to working on the map. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And I will see you all next time.